Hello everyone. In today's fast tutorial, I'm going to answer a question I've seen people ask a lot over the years, and it's how to displace geometry in Substance Designer. Usually, when you create a material in Designer, what you get is the result, in which the displacement looks nice in the middle of the shape, but not in the silhouette. This is called parallax occlusion, and it's just an optical illusion to fake depth. If you go to Material, Default, Edit, you can go to the Height section and use the Scale to increase and decrease the effect. Parallax is used a lot in games, and it's a cheap way to fake depth, and works especially well if your height differences are small. I would even recommend every designer artist to always check how your material looks with parallax occlusion, because there is a great chance that in the end you will use it that way. But we all know why we are really here. We love to see how the height map displaces our geometry, and for that we need to use tessellation. Unlike parallax, tessellation actually deforms the geo by pushing and pulling the vertices along its normals. And to enable it, we go to Material, Default, then we select the shader we want to use, usually the physical metallic roughness, and select the solution. Immediately, we can see how the geometry is now being displaced, and the effect is noticeable both in the middle of the shape and in the silhouette. Same as with parallax, if we go to the properties panel, we have a scale that increases and decreases the effect, but now we have more parameters, like the tessellation factor, which indicates how much the geometry will be subdivided before pushing the vertices. The bigger the value, the better the results, but also the slower the performance since by tessellating, we are actually subdividing the geometry. If we enable the wireframe, we can see how many new vertices we are adding. So make sure you are not abusing it. Finally, we have another parameter called Funk Tessellation Factor. This one will smooth the transition between the new vertices, giving the shape a more rounder look. It's a very subtle change, but can be useful if you are rendering directly inside Substance Designer. Tammy from the Substance team and now the Adobe team actually is one of the authors of the paper and has a video detailing how it works. I'll share the link in the description if you are interested. It is important to notice that if you are using iRay, instead of increasing the desolation factor in Material Edit, you need to go to Scene Edit, Subdivisions, and change the method to either Parametric or Length. If you select Length, then the lower the minimum length parameter, the more subdivisions you get. If you select Parametric, the bigger the number parameter, the more subdivisions you get. Well, that is how we use tessellation in Substance Designer. See you next time.